Oh, McLovin, how far you've fallen. Guess we should have seen this trajectory for you, though. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2020 dark comedy thriller, Promising Young Woman. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all that extra content. Promising Young Woman stars Carrie Mulligan, Bo Burnham, and Alison Brie, and was directed by Emerald Fennell in her directorial debut. It tells the story of Cassie, played by Carrie Mulligan, who is haunted by the events of her past and seeks catharsis by taking revenge on predatory men. Promising Young Woman is a movie I've been intrigued by for more than a year. I first became aware of it in the late fall of 2019. At the time, I was going on pretty much just the logline, but it sounded really, well, promising. In fact, it was actually on my shortlist for my most anticipated movies of 2020, but I ended up cutting it mostly because there was so little information to go on at the time. The buzz coming out of its premiere at Sundance a month or so later definitely reinvigorated my anticipation, and I was looking forward to its April theatrical release, which of course did not happen. It may have taken until the end of the year for me to finally see it, but I gotta say, it didn't disappoint. This is the type of movie that has more to offer than you might initially expect based on the trailer. The basic concept that's presented there certainly has a significant role in the story and is quite unique. The idea of a woman systematically rooting out men who take advantage of drunk women is an intriguing and compelling premise, if there ever was one. But that's not all this story is. That might sound like an odd thing to harp on, but I wanted to make the point because I think this is a movie that some people might preemptively dismiss as being too one note or on the nose based on that premise alone. I'll admit, even while watching the first 10 or 15 minutes, I had that thought cross my mind. It was an interesting and engaging concept, but it seemed like something that was going to feel too played out too early in the movie. This feeling was only heightened when my initial thought of where the story was gonna go ended up being incorrect. I was a little underwhelmed and settled in for what I thought was gonna turn into a pretty predictable story. But then things shifted a bit. It became clear that the true focus of the story was less about the premise and more about the character. And when I realized that, I was able to appreciate what the film was actually going for and was pleased by the amount of nuance in the seemingly straightforward story. I realize I'm being very vague here, but it's really necessary for this story. There are two big twists or revelations that come in the second half, and it definitely makes for a much more impactful viewing if you don't know what those are before going into the movie. But there's also a longer mystery of sorts leading up to that. We know what Cassie does, and can surely venture educated guesses as to why she does those things, but the exact reasoning and life circumstances aren't clear right away. And so much of the movie is this unraveling, slow reveal of Cassie's motivations, which I found to be really compelling and a big factor in keeping me as engaged in the story as I was. I'm sure most people wouldn't really consider those motivations to be a spoiler, but I'm going to treat them the same way I'm treating the third act revelations and keep it very vague so you can enjoy your first viewing the same way I did, completely spoiler free. With that in mind, I want to talk about the performances here. There are a lot of very small parts in this movie, and while they're all good, the clear standouts are the two leads, Carrie Mulligan and Bo Burnham. Mulligan is especially impressive here, because she has to cover a very wide spectrum of tones and emotions. Like I alluded to before, this movie's a lot more than just the vengeful femme fatale premise that's shown in the trailer. That's present in this movie, so Mulligan has to play the slick, deceitful, dangerous character, but the movie requires a lot more from her than just that. This is a grief and anguish-filled character who is much more vulnerable and broken than she appears, and Mulligan's really able to capture that side of the character, too. Burnham's role as Ryan didn't require quite as much range, but he was still remarkably charming and was able to believably pull off the different aspects of his character, too. 
This is a movie full of little surprises and subversions. I've already vaguely touched on the mystery aspect of the story, but I think this is a film that's helped out quite a bit by its structure. It sets itself up as one thing, but then pulls back and approaches things from a different angle. Like I said before, it feels a little frustrating in the moment, and almost like a bait and switch, but it's really not, because of the character-forward nature of the story. That slow character reveal is compelling on its own, but the film keeps the pace up with its breakdown of the story into chapters of sorts. They're technically items on a to-do list or checklist, but essentially function as chapters by providing us with distinct pieces of the story and new characters, all of which eventually come to a head during the third act. Speaking of that third act, I'm very torn. Again, no spoilers here, so I'm gonna be very vague, but if you've seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. The end of the second act, beginning of the third act, kicks off with a big, important revelation. I wish I could say I was surprised by it, but personally, I saw it coming a mile away. Now, I'm not telling you this to brag or even knock on the film. The reason I mention it is because it lulled me into this false sense of predictability like I had had at the very beginning of the movie. I thought I had this third act pegged. I could see exactly how it was gonna all play out and how all of the things we saw and learned throughout the movie were gonna apply, but man was I wrong. To say that the third act was a surprise is a bit of an understatement. Even as it was underway, I was still thinking of ways for it to somehow loop back around to my predictions. It never did, of course, and still leaves me in this weird middle ground between being satisfied and unsatisfied. The ending, and really the whole third act, is certainly going to be the most divisive aspect of this film, and for good reason. Like I said, I'm really torn on it. On one hand, I found it to be incredibly frustrating and too abrupt of a tonal shift, but on the other hand, I think it's more impactful and memorable and conversation starting than any of the more expected alternatives would have been. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one has got to be the performances. This film has got a lot of minor roles, which involve seeing characters only a few times, and sometimes only once. And while not particularly memorable to me, aside from one or two characters, in the moment, I thought all of the small performances were very effective. But this movie really comes down to the two leads for me, both of whom were pleasant surprises. Bo Burnham was pretty much an unknown to me, but I gotta say, I'm a fan now. He really feels like the character, and I enjoyed pretty much any time he was in the movie, especially with his great chemistry with our primary lead, Carrie Mulligan. I have seen Mulligan in a handful of roles before now, but I think she was especially impressive here, really able to capture the full range of this surprisingly complex character. The second pro is the structure. I doubt this will be an aspect that many people bring up when talking about the movie, but I really like the way that the story was presented to us. I only watched the original trailer before seeing the movie, like months and months before, so that was really all I was going on and was my expectation for the film. And the movie delivers on that up front but then spends another hour and 20 minutes delving into this character, slowly revealing the mystery behind her exact motivations, before diving headlong into the third act's unexpected territory. It was all so different from what I expected, and that methodical, character-driven structure was what kept me so engaged. On the con side, my only big issue was the third act. And to be honest, I do hesitate calling it a con and putting it on the cons list, because it definitely has merit. But the most frustrating things about this movie for me stem from it, so I've got to put it somewhere. No spoilers, of course, but man, like I said before, I'm so torn on it. I go back and forth between thinking it was okay and really disliking it, but I find myself on the disliking side more often than not. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Promising Young Woman or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm gonna give Promising Young Woman 
four out of five paws. This is a really interesting movie that takes a unique premise that appears predictable at first, but turns out to be something much more expansive and character driven. The third act hampers it a bit for me, but I found the whole film to be pleasantly deceptive. I would recommend Promising Young Woman to people who like social thrillers, character driven stories, or very dark comedies. Even better if you like all three. This movie's quite unexpected at times, so if you like films that subvert your preconceived notions, you'll probably appreciate this one. It does deal with some dark events and themes regarding assault, so it might not be something everybody would want to watch, but it explores those themes in a slightly different way than usual, so that might impact certain people's desire to watch it, one way or the other. If you liked Promising Young Woman, I would recommend The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the original Swedish version, though David Fincher's remake is pretty good too. This is another compelling movie full of some very dark themes that presents its story in a mystery revealing way. If you're interested in another dark story about how trauma and assault can affect people, both directly and indirectly, you might want to watch the original Straw Dogs. It's a pretty brutal movie, both in terms of violence and its graphic portrayal of assault but it too goes beyond just the revenge side of things and really delves into some interesting and disturbing character aspects. And if you're interested in something a little lighter, you should definitely check out Thoroughbreds. Thematically, it's still a bit dark, but it's presented as a surprisingly fun dark comedy and has plenty of twists that will surely subvert your expectations. All right, a couple of questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Promising Young Woman? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what movie do you think has the most disappointing ending? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe or add it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies, the way life should be.